Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to I Hate Code Coverage. Uh, definitely not an unbiased rant. Um, so hello, my name's Lucy. There's a picture of me, just in case you can't see me here. Um, I prefer they, them pronouns. Um, I'm a senior front-end engineer at Codat, so I mostly work in React. have been known to work in .NET land. I promise I belong here. And um, I like functional programming, making my own clothes, and making PowerPoints. So, um, oh, also, I have a website that you can look at just in case you really, really enjoyed listening to me. Um, so in this talk, I'm going to talk about what is code coverage, um, how to get 100% code coverage all the time, uh, a brief segue on snapshot testing, and something called Goodhart's Law. So jumping right into it, what is code coverage? Code coverage is essentially a measure of the proportion of lines of code that are executed when your test suite is run. There are other definitions. I don't care about those for now. This is just fine. So code coverage can be used as a kind of proxy to measure code quality. Um, if you run your test suite, uh, you should be able to make some kind of report that looks like this. This is from Jest running a React app. Um, you don't really need to worry about all the numbers. All you need to know is that higher is better, which you probably realized if you're not red, green, colorblind. So perfect is the enemy of good. 100% code coverage is unreasonably difficult. Don't bother. 80% is probably fine, but higher is generally better. Um, if you work at a company, you'll probably have some kind of minimum coverage requirements on PRs. If you try and raise a PR, Without high enough code coverage, you'll probably get a nice big red X saying, hey, you can't do that. You need more code coverage. This can be really annoying. So next I will talk about what happens when that happens and you need more code coverage. Here's how to get 100% code coverage all the time. Um, so do you remember this slide from a minute ago? I hope you do. Um, it says here it measures the number of lines that are executed. So we actually only need to execute the lines we don't need to check they're actually correct. So um, if I were having a bad day and I was feeling a bit tricksy, I can do something like this. So I can just run my code and essentially just ignore any exceptions, don't assert anything, just run it. And um, this is great because it means that apparently my code is covered. Apparently I've still got coverage for this. Um, but yeah, in case you haven't realized, please don't do this, it's uh, useless. So part number three, a brief segue on snapshot testing. So what is snapshot testing? It's a method of testing UIs. You uh, render the component in some state. You look at what the rendered HTML is. You save it. You check if it matches what you had previously. Um, and if it doesn't match exactly, you fail. But if there's no snapshot or you want to update your snapshots, then it updates the file. Um, when is this used? Uh, it's quite commonly used in UIs. So I've got this React app. If you're not familiar with React, this is essentially the basic skeleton app. Um, I've added this little bit here just to say, oh, there's a count. If you click the button, then the count increases. You'll just have to trust me on that. So a snapshot test for this app looks something like that. Um, you don't need to read it. All you really need to know is like, this is what the HTML for this app is. And it's saved into a plain text file. So someone comes along and says, can you add a decrement button, please? And can you make it look nice? So OK, you go away, you write the code. As part of that code, you update the snapshots, you raise a PR, and you'll get a diff, something like this, for your snapshot test. So um, I'll give you a bit of time. Oh, no. I'll give you a bit of time to read this and contemplate, based on just this file, would you approve this PR? Please nod or shake your head when you've made a decision. I promise I won't pick on you. I just want you to uh, make a decision. Got a few shakes. So um, of course, I'm sure you're all very clever and you realize I wouldn't have put this code up and said, yes, you can approve this code. Um, what you might have realized is that I've actually, rather than putting out the value of the count here, I'm actually outputting the word count. But the problem here is, if I have to review something like this, 
I don't care about most of it. Like I only care about these bits essentially, but there's all this other noise around it. So if you are like me and you have to review a lot of these tests, you essentially just kind of mentally skim over them and you're like, too long, didn't read, don't care, I'm gonna approve it anyway. So why am I talking about this? Technically the lines have covered, but no one checks they're correct. It's essentially this with a very thin veil of leg legitimacy. So moving on to part four, Goodhart's law. So Goodhart's law is when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to become a good measure. So code quality is very hard to measure. Um, coverage can be used as a proxy to figure out is this code good or bad quality, but adding it as a target rather than using it as a measure can have very bad unintended consequences. So in the case when I am trying to get my code to be merged and I get a failure saying you don't have enough code quality, my incentive is to get around it with minimal effort. So in this case, I will admit I have just turned around and said, okay, I'll just add a snapshot test. I'm adding more coverage. It's not a good test. It's not testing that it's actually correct. If anything, adding the snapshot test has just made the dev who follows me, their, their life is just so much harder. Um, we get this kind of idea that the code is better quality because it's more covered when in reality, it's just crap. So minimum coverage sounds good in theory, but in practice can lead to uh, bad things like really useless tests. Um, what's the solution to this? Um, I don't really know. Um, conveniently, um, I'm out of time to talk about it because it's a lightning talk, but I promise definitely if this was a longer slot, I would have gone into so much detail about this. But um, just beware if you're relying too heavily on your code coverage numbers to tell you is this code good or bad. And um, if you do have any good solutions to this, please come and find me in the pub later. Um, so yeah, in conclusion, um, I really don't like snapshot testing of UIs. Do not do it, it is bad. Uh, when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure, said by someone called Goodhart, apparently. And um, minimum code coverage requirements can incentivize bad behavior. So um, that has been me. Thank you very much for listening.